Hi, my name is Igari Silverstone and I am an over-enthusiastic investigative journalist that has seen the underhandlings of many corrupt government dealings. I have attempted to pretty much squeeze my way into every major political agreement that affects human well-being no matter the consequences. One can say that there is so much coverage and info on all the issues that I'm about to cover, but ultimately each story has its own spin on the tail. If the message is brought to public awareness on repeated accounts, even if it is from different sources, surely the public would learn to sift out the fishy from the downright wrong. The areas that I will be covering are all sourced in tropical regions such as Guam and Nigeria. Now we all know that we equate heat with general resource abundance. Where better than the tropics can we investigate these evils that are impounded upon humans? Coupled with the fact that majority of poorer peoples are housed here only makes it the more easier for these devils to penetrate and exploit all the natural resources. Based on the fact that I am in, sourced in the, tr in the tropical areas, this would explain my informal appearance. Guam is located in the Morihanas Island and currently supports more than 100 square kilometers of fringing patch and barrier reefs that encircle the island. It also has well over 100 kilometers of coral reefs on its offshore banks. It was determined that Guam's coral reefs face threats from sedimentation, runoff and pollutants, boat groundings and dredging. This would explain the marked decrease in the resilience of Guam's reefs the last few decades. The impact of military preparations in Guam is more hazardous in terms of the injustice posed to the people. Two Tier Island in Guam is an example hereof. 50% of the people that live here live below the poverty line. The cost of living on their own territory has become increasingly high. Arable land has become extensively reduced on account of the military taking up more land acreage. This results in them having to pay a lot more for basic foodstuffs. Right, I think it's best if we hear what's happening right from the horse's mouth. The first person I'll be interviewing is one of the military officials, Sergeant Williams, that has been based on this island since the military guys were relocated here. So tell me, sir, I understand that most of your activities revolve around military preparations. So what are the activities that are the most prevalent here? Well, as you know, ma'am, there are a number of things that we do besides military preparations. We even aim to better the economic statuses of the locals providing schools and healthcare facilities. I mean, look at this McDonald's here. But the bases are literally barracks and weapon depots and staging areas for war making. I mean, the environmental and humane impact of these bases is enormous. The effects of human activities on mangroves have far exceeded those of natural events over the past few decades. A study estimated that about 30% of the global mangrove loss can be attributed to the clearing of mangroves for shrimp aquaculture, with almost half of the poor and uninformed world's population living within 150 kilometers of the coastline. It is not surprising that mangrove forests have been converted to aquacultural sites. The toll that shrimp farming has on mangroves is outrageous as mangroves are critical ecosystems that protect people from natural disasters such as hurricanes and tsunamis. There are even greater carbon storages and rainforests but are most importantly a source of food for coastal communities. Natural inhabitants make up a labor team that actually grow the shrimp. They are often maltreated and are deprived of their own living and arable land on account of increasing activities of aquaculture. Those individuals who oppose shrimp farming are often met with violence. Inhabitants under the tyranny of this shrimp aquaculture are encouraging consumers to avoid the dietary option of shrimp. It is in La Malera, which is also an island in the Pacific, where they use simple and traditional methods to fish. I am currently here with Ngara. He is one of the La Maleran men that rely on subsistence whaling. So tell me, Ongara, how is your whaling possibly sustainable? When it is whaling season, the villages set out to catch migrating sperm whales. Villages currently only catch around six whales a year. The meat, bone, skin and blubber is all derived from these whales and the v value of these whales products are determined nearby. Well, this means that it has a direct impact on Lema Lera's economy.
economy, I suppose. It would seem that hunting can generally continue here, but with the number of exploitational companies out there, isn't it best if the hunting is restricted to current conditional subsistence hunting? Well, as you know, external forces have been trying to transform our oceans into protected marine territory on account of the several reef complexes. But this is hard as we depend on these waters for our survival. This is still an existing battle for us, unfortunately. So that leaves you with little possible threat when it comes to external forces attempting to hunt these waters. Now tell me, would the utilization of these waters for life-sustaining purposes they not prove more worthy of protection if they sustain such traditional populations? As you are all aware from all the headlines over the years, the Delta of Niger in Nigeria is the capital of all oil slicks. Millions of tons of oil has been dumped here. There are a number of cross-linking pipelines that cut across the delta that are prone to degradation and consequent leaks. I am here with one of the late Ken Saro Weaver's affiliates to talk about the damage that these oil leaks cause to the environment and people's lives. For personal reasons, the informant wants to remain anonymous. Yes, as you can see, many of the natives depend on these fisheries provided by the Delta. Delta supports m so many livelihoods in terms of its fisheries and surrounding timber forests. People have no option but to continue with the fishing, even though the fish tastes of kerosene. The orangutan has become the symbol of Borneo. Its expressive eyes tear out from the news letters and funding appeals of conservation groups around the world. Considering the island's unsurpassed biodiversity and the rate at which its forests are being lost, Borneo's future may well be the most critical conservation issue on our planet. In the past 20 years, vast single crop plantations of oil palm have spread across Borneo to meet the demand for the versatile oil derived from its fruit. The orangutans depend on these trees as they live in these rainforest trees. Many thousands of square miles of tropical rainforests have been cleared for oil palm plantations. Forest fires are set deliberately to clear land for plantations. Not only do fires destroy vast areas of orangutan habitat, but thousands of these slow-moving apes are thought to have burned to death, unable to escape the flames. There are also a number of, or of orphaned orangutans that are left behind. That is why there are a few sanctuaries that care for orphaned and confiscated orangutans. They are taught skills such as climbing and foraging here. When they are ready, they are returned and in turn contribute to the surviving orangutan population in the wild. There are a number of downsides though. A high infant mortality has been observed in a number of release sites. Also, the contact with humans make them more susceptible to contracting human-related diseases once they are released to join other orangutans. These and other worries remain an ever-present threat. The Pacific Islands are directly and exponentially impacted by climate change. Winds from tropical cyclones are estimated to increase by 20% as the oceans are becoming increasingly warm. Some harm caused to coastal environments are caused primarily by rising sea levels and the subsequent erosion, inundation and beachfront damage which normally washes people's homes away. Most of the people within these regions are dependent upon their living land for food production. Kiribati is rated at the, as a top island that is at risk of becoming overwhelmed by rising sea levels. Kirimaldia is one of Kiribati's eco-refugees that has been forced to abandon a home to occupy Kiribati's already overcrowded Taranawa. Kirimaldi, what do you have to say to us? Um, well, all of Kiribati is coastal. People in Kiribati are experiencing extensive coastal erosion, not just of the beaches, but also of the island. The land, sorry. This is now displacing some people from the traditional house plots they have occupied since the early 1900s. And um, these are the same people who are uh, losing their coconut, papaya trees, and other varieties of vegetation they rely on. Um, and Kiribati has more than 100,000 citizens on its main island. Its main island, Taranawa, suffers from severe overcrowding. Over 50,000 people 
which is about half of Kiribati's total population, are already crammed onto a sand and coral strip. Well, Kumali, it seems that the overcrowding and increased need for resources is a bigger issue at hand. Many health problems also stem from a lack of clean water, as rising salinity and pollution affect underground water, with diarrhea outbreaks caused by contamination from human and animal waste and other pollutants. The Kiribati government has been looking at radical options for feeding and housing its people, including negotiations to buy land on nearby Fiji. Thankfully, to the aid of New Zealand and Australia, eco-refugees will be able to be timelessly relocated. Do you realize that these exploitations that I have just mentioned here are done for the purposes of extracting materials that we use on a daily basis such as shrimp, meat and oil derived products? Choosing what you eat may have a drastic effect on the ongoing survival of these third world countries and reducing your carbon footprint may even reduce the butterfly effect of climate change caused by global warming. Well, peeps, that's all that you will hear from me for today. We'll, I'll see you again when I have something more to report about. Peace out.